Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Sinemora? 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 Silly Mori? I don't even know at this point. I'm sure there is some very specific way that this is pronounced, but I can't find out what it is. So we're probably going to change the name of it throughout this entire show. Why not? It's by a company called Digital Reality. They have indeed been showcased on this channel before. They made a game called Skydrift, which I really rather liked. It was a sky racing game with some combat elements here and there. It was pretty cool. I liked it. It was neat. This time around, they've gone into the bullet hell genre. And this is a side-scrolling shooter with bullet hell elements and a 2.5D graphical setting. So let's go and have a look and see what's going on with it, shall we? First things first, options menu, of course. Fairly limited, honestly. Graphics quality could be changed with one of four presets. Actually, no, three presets. There you go. You can turn a few things on and off, like the enemy HP indicator. Screen shake, which is terrible, so let's turn that off. So from that, that really is about it. You can't choose your resolution. I believe it just defaults to what your desktop is. That's at least my assumption in the matter. Aside from that, the mouse control seems to work for the most part on the menus. You can't change the key bindings either, which is kind of annoying. You've got two different choices, and that really is about it. Type A or Type B, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Currently, I am using Type A. I think when you've got a game that only has, like, seven buttons in total, I guess it's not really all that important. But it would be nice nonetheless. You know, it's some people have difficulty with certain default key configurations. That's as simple as that. Aside from that, that really is about it. And the basics of it is it's a shoot em up with some time mechanics going on. Now, that sounds really awesome, but it's not as cool as it seems, at least not in initially. So let's jump into the game and show you exactly what's going on here in Chapter 1. I've gone through, through the tutorial level. Now, what I do like about this game is that it does have a pretty cool setting. It looks good, it sounds good, and it is based in this really weird world where everyone inexplicably speaks Hungarian. I believe that is the native language of the guys who actually made it, so that makes sense. Ah, oh, this has pushed me back a level. That's fine. That'll give me a chance to show you a boss fight, which is kind of neat. So, graphically, it is quite impressive because, as I said, it is presented in the 2.5D style. However, I've never actually played, at least to the best of my limited memory, a... Oh, cr ah, I forgot what the shoot button is. No, it's not that one. That was actually the super... Oh, well, never mind. A, a weak start. All right, there we go. That That's the proper button. Fantastic. I never actually played a shmup that utilized the 2.5D setting. And usually I would say, if I was going to make one of these, I wouldn't make it in the 2.5D setting. And the reason that I wouldn't make it in the 2.5D setting is that it can be difficult to distinguish what's in the foreground and what's in the background. Like that, for instance, that turret back there didn't look like it was in the foreground, but it was. So that can be a little bit difficult. Stuff can pop out from the background into the foreground, which is a cool effect when you think about it. It's almost like this game was designed with 3D televisions in mind or something along those lines. But in a shmup, especially one that's exceptionally difficult, at least later on in the game, that can be a bit of a pain in the ass. It's unfortunate, really, because 2.5D is a very nice graphic style that allows for really cool stuff like this, as you can see. This is something that Ikaruga did prior to Cinemora, so it's not exactly unique, but Ikaruga came out before the whole 2.5D idea really became a thing. I suppose to some degree it was technically a 2.5D game, but nowhere near as much as this one happens to be. Now, you know, one little start, you know, one little thing I'd just like to mention there is that, as far as I'm aware, it is actually impossible to dodge that initial blast, which is a little bit unfortunate. Aside from that, it's the standard bullet hell affair, whereby the only the center pixel of your ship is actually going to get hit. Now, as you can see, I also have the ability to slow down time at will. When I get hit in this game, I don't die instantly, so it's it's a little bit casual, at least at the moment, but I am playing, I think, on the lowest difficulty level. It asks you whether or not you're a beginner, or whether or not you just want to be hardcore, and I picked beginner, so maybe that's got something to do with the fact that I can take multiple hits, but when I take hits, the power-ups fly out of me, kind of Sonic-style, and I try my best to grab a hold of them. The weapons could be upgraded nine times. As you can see, this is a fairly reasonable upgrade. Get back here. I don't really see an HP bar per se. I have a feeling it's probably something to do with time. 
Once you run out of time, that's it. You are done. So you do have to kill stuff fairly quickly and you extend time by killing enemies. It is possible, of course, that you lose time by being hit. I've never really looked at the time requirements on the screen because, of course, I've been focusing on what's been going on when I've been dealing with these sodding enemies all the time. Yeah, I think I did actually lose a significant amount of time from that hit right there. So, yeah, I guess, I guess that's how it works. Right, take the tentacle out. There we go. I'll grab one more. Okay. Once he stops with his nonsense, he can try and blow that up. I believe he follows up with some kind of super attack that you've got to kill very, very quickly. And no, I'm not out of secondaries. That's good. And he's down. Nice, easy kill on the first boss there. Design of the boss, at least designs of the bosses in general, are actually pretty cool. They have a man by the name of Mahira Maida. He was responsible for an awful lot of anime projects, including the Animatrix, some stuff in Kill Bill Volume 1, Blue Submarine Number 6, stuff like that. So I guess that's probably a well-known name for some people. It really isn't for me. I personally have no idea who this guy is. Also, the music is composed by Akira Yaimoka, which is, once again, probably not the right term, and I just got caught up by mines because I wasn't paying any damn attention. And he's responsible for the sound direction on Silent Hill and games like Shadows of the Damned. So that's an interesting choice, to say the least, pairing up with this Hungarian firm here. Now, this is another example of what I was talking about with 2.5D, is you've got all this stuff in the background. Some of these mines are not real mines. They don't affect you whatsoever, but some of them do. And that's really kind of annoying. I think in a bullet hell game, you really need clarity. You need to be able to see what's on the screen at any given time. And anything that obscures that is probably a bad design choice. It's unfortunate because it also means that a lot of bullet hell games are comparatively ugly. Now, some bullet hell fans will say to me, absolutely not. You know, all of these things look absolutely astonishing. By the way, you also take damage from hitting the freaking side of the level, which I absolutely hate. And some people say, oh, you know, it's it looks great. It, uh, bullet hell games, the cave stuff, and all of the really crazy Japanese games, they, they have their own unique graphical charm. And you're probably right, they do, but Cinemora actually looks great. Right, it is a legitimately good-looking game with excellent aesthetic design. It gives me a bit of a Crimson Skies vibe, but it's mixed in with some very, very odd boss designs indeed. You saw that huge Sentinel thing. Well, I saw screenshots for a train. Yeah, it, it, this giant, like, 50-foot-tall steam train. And it, it just looked crazy, and that was fantastic. It was wonderful to be able to see something like that. Right, let's extend some time, grab some score. I took an awful lot of damage earlier, which is not exactly ideal. So they've obviously put an awful lot of effort into the aesthetic and the way that the world is designed. It's not just that either. The world actually has a storyline, and the game itself has a storyline as well. There's all sorts of weird stuff about this gigantic war that's going on, ethnic cleansing, jingoism, and odd loyalty stories going on behind all of this. I believe the characters are some animals or something like that. But one way or the other, it's always interesting to see a shmup with a really cool storyline rather than what appears to be just a, a bunch of random crap dumped together in order to create this weird aesthetic that seems very hodgepodge, very ragtag. That's the impression that I usually get as someone that really isn't actually into these kind of games at all when I look at something like, well, I don't even know the names. I can't pronounce most of them, so I guess you guys probably guess which ones I'm talking about. You know, Jamestown had a really nice unified aesthetic. It had a cool idea behind it, but a lot of these Japanese games seem to be, oh, you're this, I don't know, you're this schoolgirl that's shooting aliens for some reason, and then there's a, a giant yellow boss that's spitting bullets all over the place. It's, it's, it's a little bit odd. Here, on the other hand, their aesthetic's cool. I'm going to go fight a submarine, because why not? <laughs> Unexpected, to say the least, but cool that this thing is actually here. All these boss designs are really rather nice, although I I'm not entirely sure about the choices of the bullet patterns. They, they seem a bit off to me. I don't have a lot of experience in this genre, as I said, but when I played stuff like Jamestown, what I got was this impression that patterns were kind of predictable, but difficult to avoid. You had to learn them, of course, can I even get out of the way of that? Yes, I guess I can. Okay, so there is at least a way of avoiding that, whereas as far as I'm aware of the Sentinel, there wasn't a way of avoiding the first shot, which is kind of annoying. What am I shooting at? Okay, there we go. Here, you can have one of these. Some of these bullet patterns seem to be kind of all over the place, and I guess you've just got to learn them, but they do seem a bit weird, don't they? 
I don't know, maybe it's just a newbie concern. That's always the problem I have when talking about games like this is that I know I don't have a huge amount of experience in the genre. I loved Ikaruga. I thought it was an absolutely wonderful game. That's mostly because of my desire to play everything the treasure ever releases. So that's probably got something to do with it. But one way or the other, it does feel a little odd. Aside from that, I decided to go and have a look around and see if anyone had any idea how long this game actually lasts. And you can play through it, assuming you don't die, in 90 minutes. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the whole campaign in a nutshell. That's, uh, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> that's, that's really, really short indeed. But there is stuff like score attack, so I guess that's what a lot of the... A lot of the actual replayability comes from here. I don't even know how I'm supposed to dodge these things. You can barely actually see them. They they blend in really, really well with the with the background there, which is not exactly what I like to see in games like this. I like to be able to see the bullets flying at me. The problem is, if you look in the background, you see all these bubbles and really nice effects. But then those missiles, well, they kind of look the same as everything else. Oh god! Uh, seriously, wow. What I do like is the variety of different projectiles that are fired at me. It's not just, hey, purple bullets, red bullets, blue bullets. It's like, he has a bunch of depth charges and swarm missiles and all sorts of other crazy nonsense. And I've got to say, live commentating a game like this is a bit tricky. Yep, it's not easy. It is not easy. But this is certainly one of the more forgiving bullet hell games shmups that I've actually been able to play. But as I said, I am on the lowest difficulty here. I, I'm, I'm not going to man up for this game, absolutely not. I would like to get past the first level so I can show you what's going on with it. Overall, I have a feeling that this game is going to have fairly limited appeal. And it's in this really weird spot. Because, of course, people that like bullet hell games, they, they like the challenge, they like the complexity, and they have a certain set of standards. It remains to be seen as to whether or not this game actually adheres to said standards. What it does have, though, is an intriguing story, a great graphic style, and some features that are fairly open to new players. So, this may be a game that I would recommend to someone that wants to get into the bullet hell genre. They want to do it in a modern way, they want to do it in a fairly western way that is accessible to them and makes sense, but is still relatively challenging. Maybe this could be the gateway drug to shmups, as it were. But it's hard to say, because it doesn't act that way for me. Thing is, I've already played games like Ikaruga and Jamestown before, so maybe I don't really need an introduction to shmups. I know that I kind of like the challenge that shmups have to offer. I like the classic sense. That was great E. Wow, I'm so pathetic. Good lord. That game just slapped me right down again. I know that I enjoy them to some degree. But it's not the kind of genre that I go out of my way to discover. It's not the kind of genre that I'll go out of my way to buy whenever it happens to come in my general direction. What I will say is, look at that. I mean, that is a really beautiful design here. And when it comes to shmups, this blows most of them out of the water in terms of how it looks. But, as I mentioned before, the 2.5D problem is something that could be considered concerning. All right, let's grab some points. Here we go. I'm going to just try and make it to the next boss because, quite frankly, the way that the bosses are designed makes me really, really interested in seeing what the next nonsensical creature or machine they throw at me has to offer. Oh, that, oh, that, oh I just burned out my Gemini drones. I, I was pressing the wrong button there and I just burned away all of my wonderful sub-weapons. Yeah, that, that was not exactly what I was aiming for. Never mind. We'll deal with it anyway. Oh, man. Bullet Hells, I think, are more about just paying attention to where the bullets are coming from rather than what you're aiming at and just hoping that you kill everything in the process. So, you know, things are going okay for the moment on this level. Really nicely designed level. Good sound assets as well. So I'm just going to shut up for about a minute and let you hear what's going on. Kinky. 
That is one cool as hell looking boss. Oh my god. Well, that was unexpected to say the least. I want that firepower back, but no, I'm not going to get it, unfortunately. Out of secondary weapons as well. You know, I keep playing and I keep finding cool things to be impressed by. And that's always nice in a game like this. It really, really is. Jamestown had a fairly similar feel to it. Ooh. Now, why did I run right into that? That was not smart at all. Let's just slow down some time to try and deal with that. But I also find things that are just slightly irritating. The idea that if you hit the side of the screen, then you actually lose time and power-ups is just astonishingly stupid. Especially in those, like, little cave levels. The underground level, the under-the-sea level that we checked out there earlier is it's just... I don't want that. That is not what I want to be focusing on in my bullet hell game. I need to be dodging bullets. And there are a reasonable number of bullets on the screen. This is, this is certainly not the hardest game by any stretch of the imagination. I believe you probably remember my pain run on Jamestown. That was significantly more difficult than this. But commentating while dodging bullets is certainly a tricky business. So it's unfortunate that I find parts of the game really annoying. And then I'm being impressed by other parts of it. It's like, oh, I really want to continue to see what other crazy designs they actually have up their sleeves here. And then I run into something that's kind of BS, like, oh, that was that was in the background. No, no, it wasn't. Or, oh, I crashed into the side. Or, oh, that's a really BS kind of bullet pattern there or whatever. But I think I can soldier on through it, honestly. I really genuinely do, because the game is just so cool. It's so well designed. The rule of cool is something I don't really talk enough about. When you design your game in such a way that the players are impressed by the creativity and imagination that's been thrown at the title, then you are in a very good place. And some players are willing to look past silly game mechanics, bad design decisions, and they are willing to look at what is essentially a very nice piece of artistic gameplay. I am not going to claim that this game is not fun, because it is. I would definitely like to see a little bit more variety. They were talking about like 50 weapon combinations. I, I, I don't really know how that could be. I assume it just means secondary, maybe in combination with the nine different levels of weapon. I'm currently on weapon level five here, but the, the gun definitely feels underwhelming. It's just, it's a bunch of bullets that fire in a straight line. There's nothing really all that special or impressive about it. Yes, you get some kind of cool secondaries every now and again, and I, I certainly don't complain about that, but I like to see more in games like this. You know, I'm the guy that liked Xenon 2 Mega Blast. I am the guy that liked Raptor. I am the guy that liked Swiv. And all of these games seem to have more power-ups and more interesting weapons at their disposal. This game, on the other hand, does not. But what it does have is this really awesome creative world. And that, in itself, may very well be worth the asking price. As I said before, if you just wanted to play through, if you're good, you're going to beat this game in about 90 minutes. Bullet Hells don't usually take all that long to beat anyway, so that's not exactly all that surprising. You are expected to do boss attacks and score attacks and try and get your rank up. I'm currently rank E. I suck at this game. Am I compelled to be better at it? Yes, to some degree. Because the game world and because the overall aesthetic design means that I want to continue playing this game and I want to see everything that the game has to offer. I think that that's something which is too frequently ignored when looking at titles like this. And we say, oh, well, it's got nice graphics. Well, that's not really important, is it? But that doesn't tell the whole story. That's, a, that's an overly simplistic way of looking at video games. Oh, God, really? Seriously? Wow, I'm going to fail this completely. Yes, you're right. You know, graphics are, in the grand scheme of things, not necessarily all that important. If a game's got really good mechanics, then most of the time you can ignore its graphical fidelity if it has any particular problems. And you can just enjoy the game mechanics. In this case, though... When you have somewhat dodgy mechanics, like they're not perfect, they're okay, but they're not perfect, then yes, a game can get by on being really, really interesting from an aesthetic standpoint and of course from the story aspect. And it can make you want to play more. That's how I feel about Sanamora at the moment. So if you are interested in this, you can go check it out on Steam. Price is $9.99. £7.99, €9.99, and Aussie dollars 99 Go check it out. I'm horribly dead. It's also available on Gamers Gate. 
if you wish to grab it on there, although bear in mind it is a Steam code. Some people have an easier time on Gamers Gate, some people find it cheaper. Oh, I found the train! Oh yes, I hoped I would find the train. What what a, what a ridiculous looking thing this is. How awesome. That, yeah, this design is consistently surprising and fun. Maybe that's enough. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. Taking a look at Sinamora, currently available on 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Available on Steam and Gamers Gate. And I would love to say see you next time, but I bet you want to see just a little bit more of this freaking train, don't you? All right. Okay. Signing off. Let's kill the train. Ismétlem a hordár a helyén. A kommandósok parancsnoka szerint legalább 200 egységnyi időre van szükségük. Mert fogalmunk sincs, mit keresünk. Csináljátok! Összecsomagoltunk, ismétlem, összecsomagoltunk. Elindulunk a felszín felé. Kitűnő munka!